Hey gang, wanted to do a quick introduction to uh, The Road to Churn. It's a Kim Kanga uh, title bought out, uh, put out by uh, Revolution Games. I think Revolution Games uses a, a fairly large number of different uh, printing uh, companies or resources because each game that I've purchased has a different uh, texture and feel and uh, quality of counters to them. Uh, this one in particular uh, feels like a magazine game in, in terms of its size and uh, complexity of rules. It's an eight-page rule book, uh, interesting topic, nice map, nice artwork. Um, the counters are sadly, I don't know if you can see, but someone just threw them in here. There we go. So these counters are not only are quite thin, but they're, they're sticky. They've got this laminate, plastic laminate on them. And so when you go to touch a counter, uh, you, know, you go pick something up and they, 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 stick, they, they stick to your fingers and it's really, really, really freaking annoying. So this game's gonna get one play and then it'll be, uh, we'll be done with it because I'm, uh, I'm not gonna do this. I sold off my uh, precious Central Front series because uh, upon opening it, I found that uh, the previous owner had laminated all of the counters. I was, I was fine with the laminated maps. I could live with that, but the laminated counters were a disaster. So anyway, this game does have some cool little mechanics. It's got these little chits that you can use. Uh, and uh, these come on a, uh, you use one, they pull another one out. Uh, I'm not sure, it says all of the chits go in a cup, but now I actually think they meant a, a cup per side. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that, uh, filter those guys out. But you use those chits at, at a given point in a, in a turn when uh, something's about to happen that is relevant to the chip. Um, standard, uh, mechanics for the game so it's control movement exploit movement excuse me things like that here's what's interesting about the counters i think the counters are really well done uh, let's just bring one of these back into focus here with just looking at one counter i can see all the obvious stuff the the size of the unit and the unit designation i can see the combat factor and the movement factors i can see the k there tells me where to set it up uh the number three there tells me that it is uh it is three steps large. That's the stacking or three stacking points. So that's the number of maximum number of stacking points we can have in a hex. So I, uh, uh, actually, maybe it's not. I forget. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> it's the stacking point. So it tells you how many stacking points you have in that, in that unit. And this one has, this guy has one stacking point. And then also on the counters, uh, those that can be exploit moved have uh, an icon that is black, so we know that uh, they can do that. So there's lot there's lots of information imparted on the counters, which gives a makes the game very intuitive to use. This tiny little chart over here, which you can't see, let's zoom in on that a little bit over there. This guy over here has a uh, movement cost for different hex types, uh, whether uh, the movement cost on a road in that hex type, uh, terrain type, I should say, the uh, stacking limit in a given hex. Ah, see, that's right. So the stacking limits are different depending on the terrain. That's why I can remember what the deal was. So in clear terrain, it's seven steps. Uh, and then the combat uh, impact as well. So nicely, nicely done, pretty lean map, pretty, uh, I won't say it's Spartan, I'll say it's, uh, uh, it has high utility and uh, it's pretty enough. So that's a quick little look at the game. Rules are, like I said, the rules are all straightforward. It's eight pages. It's very well done, well written, very clear. Interesting uh, combat results table in that uh, pretty much every result is going to provide you with a loss for both the attacker and the defender. And that will... Uh, parlay itself into some interesting uh, choices that need to be made. The Commonwealth really need to uh, clear the board to be uh, successful in winning the game. And there are only 10 turns to do that in. Oh no, actually there's 12 turns to do that in. 
uh, and, and a fairly limited force pool available to you. So there's some choices that need to be made and how you're going to approach things. Right now I'm tackling... You have to excuse me, I've got a sinus problem here. Uh, there's really three main avenues of approach. There you go, there's the third one there. And I've taken a brigade for each one and then given it some artillery and some armor support. And uh, we'll see what happens and, uh, and goof around with it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if the counters uh, weren't sticky and laminated, I could tell you that I would definitely be playing this multiple times. But I'm going to go through this one time uh, and we'll kind of go at it from there. Otherwise, uh, I'm liking everything about it. Looks cool. Ciao.